Hi, my name is Babus Pechalski and today I will show you step by step how to tune your aeroplane, especially a flying wing, with the INAV. Before we proceed, this tutorial will not solve all your problems. This tutorial will only show you a way how to tune correctly flying aeroplane. That means you have to have your aeroplane built correctly, especially correctly set up center of gravity. If the center of gravity is off, especially too much backwards, no matter what you do, the aeroplane will always fly like a piece of shit. If it is slightly too much forward, it will only like uh, fly not, not very well, but it will fly nevertheless. Always check a few times before flight, before maiden, where your center gravity is. Is it where in, is it in the place where someone who created the model designed the center of gravity to be? Of course, then you have to have, I don't know, the correct weight to trust ratio. Uh, the wings has to be more or less straight, not bended, not destroyed and other stuff like that. Mechanical stuff has to be perfect to have a perfectly flying aeroplane. Firmware, INAF, Pilot, it will not fix the hardware problems. Next, you also have to be after the maiden. You have to know that the aeroplane is already flying, not perfectly, but already flying and there are no, let's say, strange things happening like not enough servo throw or the motor is overheating or anything like that. So, it has to be good center of gravity and after the maiden when you know that the aeroplane can actually fly. Step one, you have to know the rates. It's even more important to know the rates, I mean the, the capabilities of the hardware than it is uh, with the aeroplanes that it is with the multi-rotors. You have to know how fast the aeroplane can rotate on roll pitch or on yaw if you have the uh, rudder, because if you will try to set too much rates comparing to what your hardware will do, it will just not work like you expect. So you have to know the rates. How to know the rates? How to know how fast your aeroplane and can rotate and which maximum rates you can set in the INAF configurator? There are two ways. You can just guesstimate and I will t give you the numbers in just, uh, just a minute. Or you can use a manual flight mode uh, in INAF, uh, of course after the maiden, and the black box lock and check how fast each axis is rotating when you apply the full stick deflection. It's kind of, let's say, it takes some time. I barely, rarely ever do it because it just takes too much time. I'm just guesstimating. And the guesstimates are... For the roll axis, it's somewhere between 200 and 300 degrees per second. Small and agile aeroplanes should be able to do 300 degrees per second on the roll axis, while the big, uh, really big aeroplanes designed to gracefully go through the air, it's closer to 200 dps. On the pitch axis, uh, it's somewhere between 100 and 200 dps. Again, the same, the same rule applied. The smaller, the more agile aeroplane, the higher the, the rates on the pitch will be. Probably really with the top performance, the maximum rates at 200 dps. If you don't know what to set, set 150. On the pitch, it will be fine. Set 250 on the roll and you will be fine. With your it's even worse because a hey, on the flying wings there is no authority so yaw will be like no yaw on the airplanes with the tail it's usually let's say around 90 degrees maybe 100 something with differential thrust really big rudder but if you are using just a flying wing then leave default 200 and do not bother because no matter what you do there will be no yaw control so let's go back to the numbers on the roll axis between 
200 and 300 degrees per second with probably the sweet spot around 250 degrees and on the pitch axis between 100 and 200 degrees per second with the probably the sweet spot at 150 degrees per second. The next step is the servo auto trim. You have to have your servos trimmed. That means when the servo is in the natural, in the INAF of the servo is in the natural position, it really has to be a natural position and the airplanes should fly straight. If the midpoints of the servos are not set up correctly, then there will be either interaction and it will fly, but it will not fly well. This is why always do servo auto trim if you changed anything especially center of gravity and of course after after a maiden or even during the maiden it's simple it's fast it's not a big deal there is a video by me how to do a servo auto trim so just do it don't think about it just do it because you want your servo midpoints to be set up correctly trust me Next point, auto-tune. But we will do auto-tune not to really tune the airplane, but we will use the auto-tune to guess the fit forward, to compute the fit forward of, of the PIT, not, not really PIT, P-I-F-F controller of the INAF on the airplanes. You can, you can once again get the fit forward using the math and the black box log and try to compute stuff like stuff of how much servo will be uh, deflected on the full stick deflection, but it's taking a lot of time and it's not really the perfect solution. So it's just really simple to get to run the ser the, to auto tune to run the auto tune to get the fit forward as the entry point for our tuning. It's fast, it's simple, it's taking a minute in the air. There is a video by me, the link is somewhere there. How to do the auto-tune? Just do it, it's worth it. Okay, so the preliminary steps are done. What we achieved so far? We have an aeroplane flying. We set up the rates, we know how fast the aeroplane can rotate on each axis and we set this value as a target for the stabilization inside of the INAV. We set correctly the servo midpoint so that in the natural position the aeroplane flies straight, it's not rotating, it's not pitching, it's not yawing, so it's just flying straight, great. And we guesstimate we use the auto tune to get the fit forward on the control surfaces thanks to this probably when you deflect the stick to the max the maximum rate is already reached and even at this point probably the airplane is flying just right but we can make it fly even better the difference the difference between the tune for the airplane and the multi-rotor. There is really a lot of uh, tutorials on the internet how to tune your pit controller on the drone is that airplanes can fly without any stabilization. Multi-rotors don't. Airplanes has have a shitload of stability built in. The goal for our tune that we will do in a minute is just not to make things worse. We want to use as much of the built-in stability to help us, well, let's say, to achieve level flight and to mitigate slow drift of or your or, or pitch and so we something that flying without a flight controller we would have to trim manually we just want to leave that part on rely as much on the direct user input using almost like a manual mode but with some basic stabilization in and do not make things worse so now let's go to the final final not the final the most important part of your tuning of the aeroplane Step one, dryer filter. 
you don't need fast response on the gyro. The servos by default uh, are updated at 50 Hz with the 25 Hz uh, filter on the servo output, so really you don't need any, almost any fast response from the gyro. 20 Hz, just type 20 Hz, 20, 20 not, just set the main gyro low pass filter to 20 Hz, it will be enough. You can even go lower than that, 10, 15, it should still fly pretty amazingly. Because the very slow response of the servos and the whole airplane, it's not, it's not the motor and the propeller driving the, the forces and uh, starting the rotation, you don't really need a lot. If there is small disturbance, the correctly set up aeroplane will solve the disturbance uh, uh, by itself. We do not really have to help the aeroplane to, solve, to, to fix the disturbance and small, um, small, let's say, jump or small roll or pitch in the air. No, 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 no. We only want to make, we only want to help it a little when this is needed. So 20 is fully, fully enough. Next. Guess what? You don't need P on the PID controller. It's PIFF, Proportional Integral Fit Forward. Set the P gains to zero. You don't need it. Trust me. Mm -mm. It's counterintuitive for some, for some people, but you really don't need any P on roll, pitch and yaw. The rest will, the rest and the building stability of the aeroplane and the I term will take care of the stabilization for you. Just set it to zero. You will notice the difference, really. You will notice the difference. The flight will be smoother. It will be less jumpy. Mm -hmm. Trust me. I know what I'm saying. All my airplanes are flying with PL0 and this is great. Next, don't leave don't change fit forward. The fit forward was set by the auto tune and probably is already at the good value. You do should modify the eye gains on both roll, pitch and or yaw. And guess what? The less you set of the eye gain, the better. Usually, Usually the good values are below 10. If the autotune decided that it will put more than 10 uh, on the roll, probably you have some kind of asymmetry on the on the aeroplane. It's not really balanced. Something strange is happening. So no, 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 no. Probably this is hardware issue. If there are no hardware issues, then really values below 10 should be fine. Um, six, eight, my aeroplanes are flying between six and eight on the eye term on both roll and pitch, with usually more on the pitch axis on the flying wings, because how the very limited authority on the pitch and the flaring during the landing, it's useful to have slightly more eye term uh, eye gains uh, on the pitch, but that's all. Values between 6 and 8 should be probably fine. If you are scared, try to, well, if you see some kind of a drift during the flight, you might want to increase it, but not too much. 12, probably even 12 will be too much. The less is more in this particular case. So, piece at zero, fit forward tune by the auto tune, and I gains between 6 and 8, maybe up to 10, but only maybe, maybe. I really do not suggest going above 10 on the I gains, it will be bad. And now, there is one more setting that you might consider changing. It's called the FW underscore turn, no, FW underscore item underscore limit underscore stick position. It's the moment when the INAV will lock the eye gain so that the item of the stabilization will not interact. When you want to make a tight roll, tight turn, uh, rapid maneuver, it's better not to have any eye gains because then the item might wind up, then wind out, and it's not, it's not, it's not very, very pressure. It's not very nice experience during the flight. So, default value is 0 0.5. You might want to lower this to, for example, even 0 0.1. Usually, my airplanes are something around 0 0.25. So, I do have uh, I-term stabilization. The, the flight controller 
tries to stabilize the flight when the sticks are under the center, but when I start the maneuver, it immediately goes into almost manual mode because then it leaves the it does not allow the stabilization to be more active than usual and this is like a hybrid mode when you do not touch the sticks it's almost an acro if you touch the sticks it goes into manual very very nice flying experience in the flight try it sure why not some say i know what i'm saying and now two final things flight modes my advice, forget that angle and horizon even exists on the flying wings, uh, airplanes. It doesn't make sense to use them, especially when you have the FPV installation. Just forget about them. Use Acro, the, 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 the one that where non-eye angle or the horizon is selected. Just use it. It's the natural feeling of the airplane. You feel like the, like the pilot of the real airplane when the stick controls the rotation speed, not the angle. Plus, usually the flight is much smoother. Uh, really, honestly, the flight is usually much smoother when you do not use angle or horizon and just rely on the basic uh, inner loop of the stabilization, that's called the acro in this case, which because you set the limit, stick limit position to kind of relatively low value, it's something, it's a hybrid between the acro and the manual and it really, it improves the smoothness and stability in the regular nice flying. Forget about the angle. Angle is the evil flight mode and the horizon is even worse. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. What if you want to make your tune slightly better? You can then, based on the experience with the airplane, with the tune and the black box lock and the feeling behind the stick, you might want to then slightly modify the values. Still, leave P at zero, we don't need it. You, if you want slightly more, more response because you feel like the response is delayed, bust, increase the feet forward. If you feel that the airplane is slowly pitching down or rolling to one of the sides, try increasing the eye gains of those uh, axes. Axis says slightly, but slightly and always observe. Do not like put double of, of something comparing to the previous. No, small steps until you will notice that there is an improvement. So, yeah, simple, right? Right. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that uh, you will find out that the iNav experience can be quite pleasurable when your airplane is tuned correctly. And until the next one. Bye-bye.